All right, and of course, we're paying tribute to Dr. Gerald Haydale, who passed away, but so beloved in our community. And who better to tell a few old-time stories about Dr. Jerry than his brother, Dr. Dickie Haydale. And although you were a bit younger, I'm sure you have a few very distinct stories that uh, you remember Dr. Jerry by. Yeah, Dr. Jerry was, uh, was certainly a different human being in my life, I'll tell you. Unfortunately, when we were growing up, he and I didn't kind of see each other very much because when he left to go to college, I was in school. When he came home to practice, I went to college. So I was gone for like 10, 15 years. We didn't even see each other except for the holidays. Uh, but Dr. Jerry was the only one of a kind guy like him. You know that. Yeah. I think uh, he had a way with people. He had a way with uh, patients. He had a way with friends. I mean, everyone with Dr. Jerry had that story to tell and laugh, and he just made everybody happy and laugh. You know, you, you said it in your eulogy that Dr. Jerry did everything bigger than life. So if he had a boat, it's going to be the best boat. Right. If, he, if he did a surgery, it was the biggest surgery he ever did. And, but he sort of set his own curve, didn't he? He set the curve above the bar. I'll tell you, he was a phenomenal uh, technician in the operating room. I mean, I scrubbed with him so many times when I first came to Homer, and they didn't have any many other surgeons. So as, as our general practice, we had to help him operate on all these tough cases. He's an amazing surgeon. He could, he could operate better than anybody I've ever operated with. <clears throat> but uh, nothing ever phased him. Nothing was ever too tough for him. There was no surgical case he didn't think he could handle. He did everything, and it was amazing. I was just, he just amazed me all the time. But, of course, you know, his favorite line was, you had the worst gallbladder I've ever seen. If I didn't operate on you, you would have died. <laughs> you had the worst appendix I've ever seen. And those hemorrhoids could have killed you if you didn't watch it. So, I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. Everything was the worst or the best, you know. that. Yeah, when you'd walk into the Haydell Clinic, the picture that was always up there was with all of you all. I think you might have just come back from Vietnam. I'm not sure, but your daddy was sitting in the front of y'all, and it was just a iconic kind of picture where you saw everybody there. Let me just ask you, being the youngest and being so accomplished now, but back then, was that a little pressure walking into walking into H.L. Haydell and Carl Gerald Haydell? I would I call it more than pressure, I can tell you. I had a lot of shoes to fill, <clears throat> and if you saw me sitting in that picture, I had that little hat on, and I, I wasn't smiling. Everybody else was smiling. I was kind of trembling in my boots down there. I didn't know what to expect. And of course, when I first came to home, my brother Tommy, who I practiced with, he decided to go on a vacation. And he left me with all these patients that I, I mean, I was only just out of the service. I didn't have all these deliveries and sick kids and all this stuff at one time. He really uh, got me going. But Jerry was there to help me with anything bad that I had. And my dad was still practicing too. So well, Let me ask you, y'all. Y'all are so known for staying late and seeing 70, 80 patients a day. And it just seems like that's unheard of, but it's the love for medicine in your family. Did y'all pick that up from your dad? I, absolutely. If, uh, you know, my dad would work uh, every day. He would take a Thursday afternoon off, and he'd work on Saturdays. And then on Sundays, the cars would line up in the driveway to see my dad, and he'd see him in the wash house, which we called his uh, next uh, operating room or whatever. And he would he would see patients in there all day. He never turned patients away, and, and he was seeing them all the time. And that work ethic went to Jerry's work ethic, which was unbelievable. He was the hungriest surgeon I've ever seen. Always wanted to work, never wanted to take off. And then when I came, Tommy was the same way. And I guess, you know, I said, look, that's the love of medicine. You want to start in the morning and finish at night and feel good about what you did all day long. So that's why I'm still practicing. I guess that's two reasons I'm practicing. One is I'm enjoying what I'm doing. The second thing is I hadn't figured it out yet, so I'm going to keep practicing <laughs> until I can get it right. But you make a good point. We've got a couple of minutes left on this segment. In medicine, things change so much. You said Dr. Jerry always came back and did gallbladder surgeries, you know, without opening people he, he went in with machines and robots and different things he was always willing to change wasn't he yeah, absolutely he was the first guy to do laparoscopic surgery he went off 
he went operate on some animals somewhere and he came back and said, I don't need to open anybody's ass. I said, you got to be kidding me. You've been cutting these people wide open and keeping them in the hospital for days. What's going on? He yeah. says, well, come watch me. And I went, and I, sure enough, it was, a, it was something to see. And, of course, now everybody does it. Right. It's kind of like nothing. Now everybody has to know how to do that. So I think he was a pioneer in HOMA for lapar laparoscopic surgery, and that's a big credit to him. When you scrubbed up with him, I, I bet that was some great experience. Uh, let me tell you. He was the meanest surgeon I ever I was ever with. He was good, but the worst word I get, pull it, pull it retractor back. Man, you're not even exposing what I can see. Pull that track. You so damn lazy, boy. Pull it back. <laughs> Somebody get in here and help Dickie. He can't do it right. Help it. He was on my case all the time. But you were the younger brother, so he was the teacher, right? He was the teacher. He taught me a lot. He taught me a lot in the operating room. He taught me how to talk to patients. So, you know, sometimes he was a little different the way he talked to patients than I am, but, right. you know, that's what makes the world go around. We can't all be alike. You know that. No, no but doubt. he was priceless. There you have it, Dr. Dickie Haydell, the brother of Dr. Carl Gerald Haydell. And Dr. Jerry was one of a kind throughout the afternoon here at Ellendale. We're going to have family members coming up. And they all voted Dr. Dickey to be the first one up on the segment. So uh, we finally got him on, uh, talking about <laughs> something other than tunnel run and everything else. But uh, he has promised me he's going to be on the one-on-one -on -one show. So that's coming up, and I'm breaking him in today. But thank you so much. God bless you. My pleasure. Sorry for your loss. Thank God. you for doing this for all the people and all my family. I appreciate it. All right. Thank uh, you. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. More from Ellendale. Don't go away.